I made a sauce yesterday called an Algerian sauce, which is made with harissa, which is a, a hot chili pepper paste. And I mixed it with some mayo and some other ingredients, and it sort of resembles a Thousand Island dressing, but it's got some heat in it and lots of flavor. I put this sauce in a burrito with some grilled chicken breast, some cheese, some french fries, pretty different, right? And some chopped romaine lettuce and tomato. I grilled it up on the stove and the flavor was incredible. You're gonna love it. I'm even gonna make a quesadilla real quick to show you how we do that. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to make this great recipe right after my chef joke. Okay, so we're gonna start off here with chef joke number one, and we'll have number two a little bit later in the video. All right, so why was the burrito fed up with its fillings? Because they wouldn't remain calm. We are gonna start off here with our sauce. We gotta get that Algerian sauce going. So I have in my bowl here a half a cup of avocado mayonnaise. And to that, we're gonna add some tomato paste concentrate. You could use um, ketchup if you wanted to, but this is a little bit better in terms of the flavor. So we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of this. You can get the written recipe below in the description of the video. We're gonna add about that much. I'm using a little bit of whole fat uh, yogurt here. This is Nancy's Probiotic, 100% grass fed. So we're gonna add some of that in there. This is a vanilla flavored. So it has a little bit of sweetness to it, but not too much. Now this is the real important ingredient here. This is the Harissa hot chili pepper paste. You can find it in some stores. Trader Joe's has it, which was a nice surprise to me. And with this, you can play around with it. The heat, a nice uh, medium amount of heat is two teaspoons of this particular brand. I would mix it up and then taste it and see if you wanna add more or not. And if you're really a wimp, you could always start with one teaspoon and, and build your way up. So I'm gonna give that a stir. Now remember I was telling you this kinda of looks like Thousand Island dressing? Well, here it is, it kinda of does look like that, but it's a little bit different. Okay, now I'm gonna add some ground cumin. I like to just kind of spread it around so it's not in one big clump in one spot. It makes it harder to mix in. And one half teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. And I'm gonna give that a stir. Now I have some minced onion here that I chopped up very fine. I like it super fine dice because that way it gets all over and you don't have big chunks of onion and the flavor is just a little more mellow and just a little bit better, I think. So it's really important to cut it nice and small. So I'm, so I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of that in there and we'll give that a little stir. We're not done yet, we got more stuff to do. So I've got a, a lemon out of my garden, so it is organic, and I'm gonna zest this lemon right into this sauce. Those oils really make some nice flavor, and then we're gonna add a little bit of the juice as well. Now you don't wanna go too deep on this, you just wanna hit it once and not go into the white part of the lemon because it's bitter. Cut off a little bit of the lemon and squeeze in, you know, a couple teaspoons of the juice. And that is it. We're gonna put this in the refrigerator, and I'm just gonna keep it nice and chilled. It'll thicken up a little bit more, which will be good, because I like it nice and thick. I'll cover it and refrigerate. Now that we have the sauce made, we're gonna just prep up our tomato and the lettuce I already bought, and it's already cut up. This is romaine lettuce. I like to use romaine because it's nice and crispy. So you want something with a little body that's gonna hold up because we're putting it in the burrito and we don't want it to get all mushy. I've got a tomato here. I'm using Roma tomatoes just because they, they're less juicy and they're more meaty. So I'm taking out the little stem there and then I'm just gonna cut this into bite-sized pieces. I'll slice it one way and then we'll turn the tomato and cut it the other way to get some nice chunks. So now we're ready to start cooking up our french fries. I'm using frozen here. And what you wanna look for is basically the oil they're using in it. You wanna go for avocado or olive oil. Unfortunately, these have soybean oil, but that was all I could find at the time. So we're gonna pour them out onto a baking sheet and cook them as per the directions on the package. And you wanna make sure they're in a single layer so that they crisp up nicely. So we'll place these in a 450 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 minutes. So here's our french fries, all nice and golden brown. That was easy peasy. I'll set these aside until we're ready to use them. It must be time for chef joke number two. Now why can't breakfast burritos do an all-nighter? 
because they get exhausted. Now we're going to start on our chicken. Here I have some thinly sliced chicken breast just to make it quicker and easier. But you can see here the unevenness in the thickness, so I'm going to still have to pound this out. Pounding the breast thin like this is going to speed up the cooking and make it cook evenly. Then we want to season these up simply by just adding a little bit of salt, paprika, and garlic powder. And make sure that you season both sides. And now we're ready to cook these up. Okay, so I have a, a frying pan here over medium-high heat, and we'll add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. Once that oil gets hot, and you can tell because it starts to shimmer a little bit and gets very liquidy, okay? It coats the pan easily, and I can feel the heat coming off of it. So, we're gonna place our chicken breast in the pan gently, and we're not gonna move it, we're just gonna let it sit there. That's so that it can sear up and we don't disturb that sear. Because these are pounded so thinly, they are gonna cook up quick. I'm guessing about three minutes per side. I have a plate over here so that when they're done, they go onto a clean plate. Don't put them back on your cutting board because that's got raw chicken on it and you don't wanna get sick. So after about three minutes here, you can see how the, it's getting white up the side of the chicken. That's when you know it's about time to turn it over. So we're going to let this go another probably three minutes or so, and then we'll check it with our instant read thermometer. So place your thermometer right in the middle of the chicken breast and look for a temperature between 160 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. What I do is I typically pull it off at about 163. What you don't want to do is dry it out. Now after this pan cools a bit, I'm going to take my paper towel and just wipe out some of the excess uh, grease and and a little bit of fawn that's in there because I'm going to use the same pan to grill up the burrito once it's all put together. Now that the chicken is done, and before we cut it up, you want to heat up your tortillas. Now I have these really large Mission flour tortillas here, and these are not the biggest that they come, but they're the biggest that fit into my tortilla warmer. So here's your tip. You've got to heat up your tortillas before you try to fill them and roll them because if you don't, they're going to crack and stuff's going to fall out and you're not going to be happy. So heat them up. The best way I have found is a tortilla warmer like this one. You put them inside and you can put several in there, pop it in the microwave for 30 to 45 seconds and they stay nice, warm and pliable and you can work with them really easily. So I'm going to heat this up now for about 30 seconds. All right, check it out. This thing is nice and hot. You can see the steam coming out of it. That tortilla is nice and soft. I'm gonna leave it in there until we're ready to roll our burrito. So now it's time to cut up the chicken. You wanna make some nice thin slices and then cut it in the other direction so the pieces are bite-sized. What you wanna do is have a piece of chicken in every bite of your burrito. And I got my nice hot tortilla here. And we'll put some sauce on there. Now you wanna put it right in the middle. Wanna be generous. Don't go all the way to the end because we're gonna be folding those ends in. So just like that. And we'll take our chicken and sprinkle it all the way across. So you get a piece in every bite. Next, I'm adding some Monterey Jack cheese. You could use shredded, which might be easier, but this is all I had. Next goes those beautiful French fries. Make sure you get some of those all across your burrito. And then you want to come back in with a little drizzle of some more of that sauce. And we're going to finish this off with a little bit of romaine lettuce, chopped up tomato, and some chopped parsley. Now to roll this up, just fold in the sides and roll the top over, and then tuck it under. Okay, I've got my same frying pan here that I cleaned out, and I'm going to put some butter in the bottom of the pan because the butter just makes it brown up so nicely and makes it really delicious. I'm gonna carefully bring my burrito over to the pan and set it in. Now you need to put a lid on this so that it'll really heat through. It'll heat everything up really good and it'll melt that cheese. So I have it on medium low to low temperature. After three to five minutes, go ahead and check your burrito. What you're looking for is this nice golden brown exterior. Place the lid back on top and cook it for another three to five minutes or until it's nice and golden brown. 
So remember how I told you we were going to make a quesadilla out of this? Well, let's get started with that. It's essentially the same thing, only I'm using Siete's uh, almond flour tortillas. This makes it gluten-free. So we spread that sauce, but not all the way out to the edges of the tortilla so it doesn't leak out. Add the grilled chicken pieces. Next is the Monterey Jack cheese and the french fries. We're gonna add our lettuce and tomato, and then we're gonna change it a little different and add cheese on top so that the top tortilla will stick. So I like to place a little oil in a small frying pan over medium high heat, and we'll place the quesadilla right in there, and I'm gonna place a lid on this as well to keep the heat in and melt that cheese. After about five minutes, you're gonna to wanna to check your quesadilla, see if it's golden brown, and then flip it over. Now to serve up our burrito, I'm just going to cut this in half for you so you can see the inside. And here's that quesadilla we just cooked. Speaking of breakfast burritos, you're going to want to try my breakfast burrito that I have. I'll put a link right here for you on the screen. Click it, go check it out, make that burrito. You are going to love it. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button to let me know and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and that tells you when my new videos come out every week. So thanks again. We'll see you back here next week for another rockin' recipe.